So as I alluded to earlier, we have a very special guest here at the Dry Docks, uh, Mr. Ken Dow. Came all the way from uh, Austin, Texas, and uh, Ken's got a very special project, and we want to share it with you. Uh, we're going to have an, a general overview, but we're going to go deep into this project because it is so utterly cool. Let's take a quick look at what's going on here. So you guys already know I am a die-hard Disney Nautilus fan, so when Ken got in touch with me and told me about this, I had no choice to go out there and take a look at it. I'm glad that you're here, so why why are we here? Why is this in my shop and not in your house? Well, I built it not knowing how to wire it. Bob's going to wire everything for me. Put in a control panel, make this thing light up, it'll be a gem. That's, I think that's the last thing that this needs, is, is this full lighting system. Now, you've already installed all the, the lights, correct? I've installed as many as I could install. Okay. I'm not an electrician. All right, all and, right. But you, you'll, when we dissemble it, you'll be able to see where I have put them in. All right. Let, let's give people a, a, just a general overview of this, of this project. So when, when was this started? How long did this take you? Let me, let me do a little, I was watching this with my oldest grandson, the movie, 20,000 Leagues. I looked at the movie and I said, I don't think that hull will contain that interior, or vice versa, that interior will fit in that hull. And I started making drawings in my, I had an art studio in St. Louis. And I started making drawings, I could not solve it on paper. I said, I'm going to have to build it. Got online, found a hull, that uh, William Babington was going to sell. Will Babington, yeah, you bet. And bought his old hull, spent about a year and a half cleaning it up, and then another half year working on the other half. I was going to enclose this originally and decided against it on Bob's advice. <laughs> and uh, then I just started building, literally building it in three dimensions without any real plans, I made boxes, I fit them, and then I started dressing them. Mm -hmm. And so this this hull, for anybody not familiar with, with Will's uh, boat, is seven, about roughly seven, seven feet, feet long. Um, it's a super interesting boat. The, the rivets are a little big, but I kind of like that because it gives a lot of visual interest to the boat. Um, fiberglass hull, and uh, you just kind of took it and, and ran with it. And obviously when you were thinking about the inside, this was before the days really of like 3D modeling and CAD design and all that. I, had, I didn't even own a computer. Right, <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. So uh, this, this was really the only alternative you had was to make it real, will it into being. Exactly. Very good. So um, generally speaking, we're, we're, you're looking at the full interior everything it all connects and all the little passages line up and everything this is as close to a practical layout of the Disney Nautilus as you will ever find in physical form um, and this is all modular right like these little yeah. sections actually come out we're, we're going to disassemble it you'll see it so with some difficulty some of them come out We'll, we'll make it happen. So we're going to delve way deep into this. And as we extract these, um, we're going to go deep into the details that are inside. We'll show you what it looks like. And we'll get some commentary from Ken about uh, some of the decisions that he made to put the things where they're at and all of the neat little details that we see inside. So uh, I guess let's get started. All right. All right, now is going to be the really fun part. We are going to get a guided tour of the inside of this Nautilus, thanks to uh, Mr. Dowd here. We're going to start at the front, and we're going to work our way back. So let's get started. I started this project in uh, 1999, and I asked advice from friends. And two of the friends who gave me good advice were Ron Lazorti, and I made a little tribute to him. 
He's an artist teacher in St. Louis, and he said, I think I know where you can find little dots that you can use for your rivet heads. Really? He sent me to a place. I've, I've bought about two... I bought at least 20,000 of them over the years. <laughs> anyway, I can't, I can't remember how much. And the other person was a childhood, childhood friend who passed away recently. And his advice was, make it out of plastic. And his name was Frank Vorga. I made the box Frank and Vorga, so it would seem like a business. So I put everyone up here in the front who was influential in helping me figure out some of these problems. And here is that Bob one, Martin. That looks familiar. And he is Marine Services. And I, he sits right here. And, and I don't know if I told you if it was just fate or whatever, but I'm actually Canadian. So. And it says... And, Nova Scotia, Canada. Uh, which I know you're not from, <laughs> but that was a maritime state. Yeah, it was, absolutely. And so I made it Nova Scotia, Canada. And you're from, actually... Alberta. Alberta. Yeah. Uh, the Plains. All right, now here... So, let's start right up at the very, very front, because okay. that's really cool. All right, well, the RAM, of course... What do you call this, technically? The, I call it the RAM. The RAM, okay, the RAM. Now... I actually saw this in the movie and thought that this was the area, because of the structure of it, that Ned Lamb was imprisoned in the hole. So this became the hole, but it was large, and I didn't want just a blank area that represented the ram, and he's ram, uh, Captain Nemo is ramming ships, so I put in a large spring and a shock absorber to take some of the impact on this riveted hull. Yeah, that's a that's a great idea. And, and as we know, I mean, this would maybe be, you know, kind of an emergency situation if I had to like ram ice maybe or something. Because when he killed the ships, it was it was it via was the raker arch. With the raker arch, yes. Yeah. Ripping the bottoms out of them. Then, just using the movie as reference, there appeared to be a uh, a corridor here. I think it, in the movie it turns at a 45 degree angle. But I couldn't do that and I still had to have access to this uh, hatch to get into the hole so that was my solution. In, in the movie this lower area here is um, cruise quarters but in this scale which it's scaled to 210 feet Disney ship is 180 feet even at this scale i don't have enough room to squeeze in cabins nor do i have a way to access it we'll talk about that later all right so the cruise quarters for me were up here they had to be forward professor aranax's cabin is on the other side you want me to pull this out yeah if we're, if we're at the point we can get that out let's do it that is One of the cruise quarters. I wound up with an extra cruise quarter, by the way, doing it this way. That's the sink. I assume that was a toilet or a closet. I made it a toilet. That's how I was able to fit the bunks in. There's three bunks. Yeah, triple bunk. Yeah. And it's a, it's much tighter because uh, the sub uh, actually is conal shaped at the front and the rear of the structure. And that affects the cabin shapes. They don't, uh, Disney doesn't show that. They're making their cabins cylindrical. Mm -hmm. This is the far cabin, and I can push that door open, but we'll look at it later for when we pull it out. Uh, this is Nemo's cabin. Nemo's cabin is really different from the movie in the fact that it is only about two-thirds of the width that they indicate in the movie. And that's because there has to be a central corridor here as well. And two things can't occupy the same space at right. the same time. And I'll pull out Nemo's cabin. These, uh, these two uh, beams are recent additions. It didn't look like there was enough structure. So I made these just lately. And they pull out. This, this supports the front of the wheelhouse 
and it slides in there and that pulls out. They'll look more correct when they're glued in place properly. Quickly, quickly uh, talk uh, about this because I think this was really, really neat. This is kind of a Flash Gordon version of what I assume would be a generator that would electrify the hull. We see that when the natives invade the sub. Mm -hmm. And there's, a, again, when we get to the rear, you'll see that there's some other indications like that. This would be the charge that would hit the hull and electrify it. This area, by the way, before we pull it out, that is my solution for connecting the two forward tubes so they have a connector and the hatch, which is from the central hallway up to the forward hatch for, ac for exit, egress and exit. Um, this was all very tough to fit. Anyway, I'd be willing to bet, yeah. There's a little pump back there that fills these uh, chambers, as you can see, and it's operational. It actually moves. And it, this should be a full story, but it's a half story. Very cool. And this, this I guess, would be the, the anchor windlass, right? It, it probably should be, but in my case, that's in Professor Aranax's cabin. And not, you have to remember, I was an artist and I was just visually looking at this. I couldn't figure out what it was. Mm -hmm. So I made it a breather pipe with a snorkel apparatus. A secondary way to pump, bring pump air into the, uh, sure. into the sub. There's nobody going to tell you no. I think it looks good. Nice. Let me take this apart here. That, I think, is the, what uh, like impresses me the most, is that this is like all modular. Everything comes apart, goes together, comes apart, goes together. Building it once so it fits is easy. Building it so it'll go back together again... Well, later is the hard part let's talk about the wheelhouse all right i've used the front hatch as a locking mechanism right now i'm having trouble locking it but it will fit in there this is the front hatch beautiful and this let's take off the and you i call these the frog lights or the, or the alligator the, alligator most eyes. people call them alligator alligator yep. eyes Okay, and this disassembles right now. There is... Now we're talking. Let's get this thing into the light. There are some modifications from the movie. It's not quite exactly like the movie. This, this isn't in the movie. A little step, yeah. Okay. Now, a little step. I had to have it. Um, the, four, the hatches in the back will not slide... As the movie shows, with this as a drafting table shape, it, it, it retracts into it. Yeah, I know. Yeah, but it, mm -hmm. for mine, they ha I had to have room for it, and uh, they will go back. But they wouldn't have they wouldn't have retracted that with that shape on this particular model. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It had to be flatter. It's a it's a challenge with the other ones that I've done as well. Yep. Really? Yep. Okay. This is, this is not uh, uncommon. Not an uncommon problem. The staircase in here is also modified. Oh, this is different. Nice. As you come down the stairs, you see the name of the sub. There you go. This is the breathers. Bob has made his operational. This is pretty solid. But it's only solid because I made cross beams oh, yeah. to make it to make it rigid, and frankly, I couldn't figure out how to make this operate. <laughs> and I needed this. I needed the rigidity. Yeah. Now, one of the bubble lenses is out because we might need to work in here a little bit. And but this is the side that you can see it. Mm -hmm. The dive levers the visible dive lever. through the window. And then, and the ship's wheel. I changed the front end of this for structure because I thought it might need some structure, and I used that as a heat vent in the floor. There you go. Defrosters for the window. Defrosters, <laughs> exactly. And then here is the what we all see: 
there had to be some equipment underneath here to function and operate these things. So even though I didn't connect this to the rest of the sub, that's the power for the ship's wheel. The, like, the, like the gearing or whatever. The yeah, gearing. yeah. This is the gearing for that. The uh, dive, dive levers. Plane, dive mm -hmm. levers. And that is just part of the electrical system. Very cool. I, I love the attention to detail. Let's, let's go now and take my half deck out. This, I, not knowing what this really was, I made it a snorkel breather and attached it to part of the uh, channel system that they use to circulate and hold the air. This design by Harper Golf, he used a... Uh, what is it, the bridge at the Firth of Fife or something in Scotland is, is, is his uh, inspiration. inspiration. Mm -hmm. And in this sub, he makes the first, the upper half in this piping hold the oxygen. I did not do the lower half because I couldn't figure out how to do it in the same method. But that would have held ballast water. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about that in mm -hmm. a little bit. I did it another way, Good, frankly, because it couldn't make it work his way. This is our half uh, half deck. Bob will put a light in here, and that is the exit for the wires, which will fish under in here, go through that groove, connect up somewhere. This is the air pump. I tried to keep it a late 1800s looking air pump, but frankly, it's just a it's just my imagination. But it does work the way an old air pump would have worked. Very cool, like the like the, the the wheel on a locomotive. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And of course, the hatch opens from below. The central forward corridor or hallway would be right under here, and I tried to keep the same style. And I put these guard rails in just to make it have some, so they wouldn't look like they were going to fall out of the sub. But in fact. The hull shape would keep them from mm -hmm, falling that mm -hmm. direction. Um, this is in keeping with the other designs of the ladders inside the sub, but I used it again because I used it structurally. It locks into this forward area right there into that niche. And and, and there's that central corridor that he was talking about earlier too. This is the crossover, connects the two pipes. And this inside the sub, there's no place for these to connect. I connected them here. And let that be the kind of the recess for the hatch to drop into. Mm -hmm. Now, let's, here's Nemo's cap. This is only here because of this. I had to, if you look at the movie closely, you will see that this pattern here is shown here and several other small places. I assumed that they were making rib shapes that had this structure to them, so I repeated it a couple of other places. Here's Nemo's cabin coming out, if it will. These are the, for lack of a better term, I call them the rib tubes. That is, uh, there's a piece that locks in here and fits over it here. This is a mimic from the uh, chart room, and I wanted to use it again, and I've used it two other places in the sub. This attaches to Nemo's cabin. He can walk down this, uh, it would be the starboard uh, corridor, and we'll talk about the, after, uh, the uh, port corridor, and he can get back into this area through this, and I've turned it into a uh, laundry room. This is a, a Japanese soap tub. There's a sink and a faucet around. And there will be a curtain on this rod. There you go. Let's take a look at those that sink you got hiding back there. You can get some light in there. Oh yeah, there you go. And there's the levers to operate it. When you're watching the movie, you'll notice there's no heads. <laughs> yeah. So I've, I've installed three. 
that's this is uh, the main one but it doubles as a laundry because they also show no way to keep their clothes clean there's of course the ringer and that's it we'll get back to that let's get Nemo's cabin out if we can this is uh, Captain Nemo's cabin we just tried to take it apart without much success it's too tight here is my solution to how to light his cabin it is not part of the movie yep that looks Nemo-ish it has the same uh, shapes that you see in the spiral staircase and that's repeated in a couple of support uh, places around the sub you can see that in the movie you can see the chart this is slightly rearranged because I couldn't make the cabin as large as the movie shows it there's the there's this chart which has his own method of uh, navigation if I can get in from the side here if you hold it up there we go I could not make the uh, the cabin as wide as it actually appears because there's a central corridor that we'll show you in a minute and there's a there's a, uh, a portrait I'm not familiar with on the wall that's my wife <laughs> my, son, my son Jason's gonna paint a tiny little portrait of her there in the 18th go. century I'll replace that. She has been incredibly patient. Uh -huh. I would be willing to bet. Yep. Go ahead. And I was going to point out your little drawers. Yes. I. Uh, these are actually open from Nemo's side, but I've made them so that they, well, they have to pull from this side. I can't operate them otherwise. Um, and yep. then here is the. There, there's the one of them that came out while Go we ahead. were while we were playing. Yeah. There we go. And here is the central corridor. And this appears in the movie pretty much this way. Very cool. This ladder is, I've made this ladder and fitted it into that niche so that this can be pulled, placed in two holes in the central corridor, leaned against the upper uh, deck and this is the access to that forward to hatch. the forward hatch yeah you bet it's a little storage cubby little storage cubby exactly this this looks fairly accurate to the it movie. looks pretty darn accurate yep these are the other in my redesign of the system I wound up with an extra forward cabin there's only three shown in the movie I have four, including Nemo's. That's okay. I figure there's a 24-man crew. They sleep, uh, they work a 12-hour shift, and they hot bunk it. Yeah. Uh, Very cool. They're getting old, so mm -hmm. they're, they're getting a little tough. And I'll go around to the back side. Maybe you can, well, there, here, there's. This should actually be higher in the sub because of these shapes. This is part of the design in the movie, and you can tell by that shape that it is meant to go against the upper. A little, uh, little higher, yeah. A little yeah. higher in the sub than I was able to put it. Yeah, wow. And, and there's not much to see in the cruise quarters because I had to have some structure here to hold it. But this has got a reverse system from the cabin across the way. It has uh, one, well anyway, they're different. I just made them different because, just to make them different. This one has two bunks on this end and one this way. The other one's another way. I can't remember at this moment, uh, but it's different. And they're tight. They're small. Sure, which they would be. The um, the anchor, uh, what'd you call that earlier? The, the what windless, pulls it? The I windless guess. would have to sit here. In the movie, that is a wooden uh, clothes closet, but this would have to be where the anchor was in this version of the of it. 
Oh, that's the, the port side uh, that's corridor. The, that's the port side corridor. There are a couple of little pipes that they actually have to be fitted in here, and that'll happen later. Mm -hmm. uh, I always felt that the sub didn't have enough machinery. It just There's just not enough to make it go. So this is just an invention of mine. I don't know what it does, but uh, I stuck it in this white space that I had in the corridor. There's still plenty of room to get around. You, you, uh, and this shows in the corridor, by the way. You, you come up this way, and then you go forward here. You have to make, uh, it doesn't show uh, Aranax's cabin with an angled wall, but it would have had to have. would have had to have, yep, yep. All right, now let's take the, we're going to be able to see the chart room better. All right, this is the chart room. There's a number of variations between mine and... and uh, All right, I'm going to go to the other side. All right. Again, I wanted a, a little more of a mechanical look, so I built this on the reverse side of the maps. And it also gives me, if I can pull it out, gives me access. That is cool. Got a little fire fire alarm bell in there. Well, you hear the Claxton go off all the time. Yeah, so I put yeah. Clax, I put Claxtons around the ship. There we go. And I made a major change in, well, for, everything is squeezed, first of all, just to make that assumption. Everything is squeezed tighter than in the movie. But if, you can, if you're able to look at the stairs going, descending down to this side hatch and then down to the lower level, you'll see that I made them spiral around the circular staircase. Mm -hmm. On this, on the uh, port side, in the movie, they they drop straight down. Right, right, right. But that it worked it it worked better for me, and I thought it looked a little better, so I made that modification. I like it too. It made sense. Mm-hmm. And then we got the uh, inside of the corridor on this other side here. Now this is, if I can get it open, they don't show this. That is. Another head. <laughs> it's got a, a a shallow tub, shower area, toilet, and a sink. Oh yeah, look at that in there. Yeah, and it's it's so hard to get all the details on the camera. Like you just everywhere you look, there's things to look at. The the down view isn't very interesting, but you might want to take a look. There's, by the way, there's no door there in the movie. <laughs> right. I, in the movie, I think they use this space, which is longer, to have a corridor, a cross corridor, that they can descend down. Oh, okay. And there's the upper view. Mm hmm So this, this is the door to the staircase that comes up behind the wheelhouse. Right. And I feel like that they made a change in the movie. This would have a hatch on it normally. You would think so. That would seem like a natural, and they've got the space for it to swing back perfectly. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I, I didn't do that, but I thought about it a long time. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's the spiral staircase, very tough. Here is a change that I had to make. Uh, the move In the movie, Nemo exits this doorway and go straight into his cabin. I couldn't do that. I had to have a corridor. Mm -hmm. So I've got a curved wall, which I thought was very nice. And it's uh, it goes around and then there is a short corridor and then you go into Nemo's cabin here because they show it on the extreme starboard side. And you can't exit this door and walk straight in, you go through the chart the wall chart in his cabin. So I... Oh, I had, make a little jog, yeah. I had to make a little jog, and I use that to show to put some pipes running yeah. up and down. And I had to put a pretty ugly pin in, but that's... This can, this can come off. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 
Yeah, beautiful. Very cool. And some of my photographs that I have taken over the years, it almost looks real. Looking, uh, in, looking into oh, it. Oh, sure, yeah. It started with me wanting to know what this sub looked like. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. And so I had to, I had to solve it myself to know what it, how it would look. This is the hatch, obviously, and mine is steeper, a little bit steeper because, again, it should be a little more. I had made, this is built twice. Uh, it just had to to be that shape to fit in the space I had. You'll notice the last two steps are almost vertical. They are vertical, as a matter of fact. That is not correct. In a, in a larger scale, it would this would be worked out better. Here is the door that you see in the movie slide shut. I gave it a track there to open it. <laughs> These pipes are not quite correct, but they would have to pass through here. Right, right. Yeah, I, I really don't think you need to apologize for having to put anything in that, that needs to be there for the sake of function, function in right. the way that you built this. This is the forward bulkheads for the Grand Salon. As a, and, and because I made the stairs so steep, you can see I put handrails in. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. I'm glad you're thinking of the safety of the crew. <laughs> now here's, here. this looks pretty close to the actual movie. Yeah. Yeah, very cool. The the desk is not as large. And for those of you who don't know, the desk was about half or half again to twice this wide. It mm -hmm. was darker like like the this is. And it was borrowed and I can't tell you in the movie studio, but from the movie this was Mr. Potter's desk in It's a Wonderful Life. And they just used it in the movie. This piece, uh, it'll, well, it'll come up later. You'll see the water, I call it the water fountain, mm -hmm. in the uh, Grand Salon. That came from the movie Quo Vadis. Okay. You're, you're deep into this. I, mean, I thought my, I was a fan, but you're deep into this. Well, I know some things. <laughs> I'm not nearly as technical as you are. You know the technical side. <laughs> I don't. Uh, this will have a, um, a little... Uh, Curtain? curtain over it to block this but if you look closely in the movie you will see that this actually is a circular uh, contraption like they use in the dark room in a photo lab this actually swings shut oh, okay rotate shut but I couldn't do that I had a devil of a time this has been reworked at least three or four times I had a devil of a time getting all these angles come together and giving you enough space to actually descend, turn, get head clearance, and walk down. And you'll see oh, all yeah. the machinations to get that head clearance. Mm -hmm. But that is... Oh, and Nemo's... Nemo's crest. So these things, these look difficult. These were simple compared to some of the other things. Oh, I'm sure, yeah. Here are your lights. Yep, they you bet. Those are going to look great, shining right down on those two things. They don't indicate lights there, but it's an obvious place Makes for sense. them. Yep, be awful dark otherwise. Awfully dark. And if you want to sit on this couch and read, you're going to need light. These pieces are... This is the uh, port side. I call them the rib pipes. I'm sorry I'm repeating myself. Uh, doesn't look like they line up quite perfectly. But there is a connector in here. It goes, there's a little tiny void in here, and you'll see it in a minute, or I, I can indicate it. This is just something to fill that void. In the movie, they suggest that you can walk behind these pipes and out into this area, and that would work in the larger scale with the double hulling. But I don't have that in this model, and so this piece is an invented piece, and it's a stop. It gives me a place to stop the uh, room. Mm, yep. The uh, pipes come out. All of this business here fits. There's a slot there. Okay, there it is. That indicates the exact position. 
These are now in the correct position if that slots, if that's in the slot and it's vertical. And there are two little pipes that have to run in here. In the movie, they run all the way down and up here. Because I use this device to line everything up, only one of them passes through and up and goes up into the major pipe here. The second one, I had to divert into that area. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. Take a look at the Grand Salon. It's about two-thirds the size of the movie because I'm squeezing space from everywhere. That's actually a really cool shot. There are six pipes inside the Grand Salon in the movie. There's only four in my model. And then and by the pipes, you're talking about this. Now, are, are, do you call these ballast pipes as well? Like, are they used for ballast in your, in your yeah, version? To me, they're used for oxygen. Okay. They're, that's where they, they pump in and store the oxygen. That should be the same system down here. But because of the shape of the interior of these forward rooms, which we'll see in a bit, I used ballast tanks. It looked like they're... This area was narrow enough that there should be ballast tanks here, and the outside vents that you uh, that you'll right. see yep. line up with this area right here. And there's a reason for all of this, and we'll take this apart in a bit. Okay. Um, all right. This is an invention of mine. It looks like a movie house marquee, but really, it's uh, it has to be there to give structure. And part of the reason for this long curved pipe, mine's only about two thirds the length of the one shown in the movie, I believe is to allow headspace to access down into this area. Mm -hmm. But I also had to give it this shape to kind of force you into that belief. And I, and I think in the movie, if I'm not mistaken, there was a curtain rod that ran yep. on the back. Yes, and, and I'll tell you, I thought about it, but I didn't attempt it. <laughs> no, and and uh, it would actually it would it would block access to the viewing of that beautiful it, salon. It's a real yes, it's fun, but you never see the curtain drawn. By nope. the way, in the movie. No. Uh, now here is a tricky little part. I had to brace this up. This is pretty solid, as you can see. Making this thing fit together solid was a problem. These are some of my solutions. Like a wedge? Oh, look at uh, that. Oh, a little wedge. These will be putty. And this, because of all the electronics, on the far side later, you'll see that I arranged... The, Captain Nemo speaks about the batteries. Mm -hmm. Where are they? I arranged them around the dive chamber. Not on this side, because I wanted you to be able to see the dive chamber. But this is part of the insulator that has to do with that particular aspect, and that helps hold this in place. Very cool. Now, we will pull this. You can see this is all, everything about, there's nothing simple about building this sub. <laughs> Everything, it's three-dimensional, so everything has to work with everything else. The, the fact that you did this without the aid of any sort of, like, CAD software or something like that is, is astounding to me. And maybe I'm, there's the older generation who will be laughing at me. But oh, I'm an old-fashioned artist. I use, <laughs> I use the method of trial and error. Yes. Yeah, that, that settee couch looks terribly comfortable. That looks awesome. I, I could chill out there and watch the fish. That is uh, Sintra and pipes, plastic pipes cut and glued into place. There you Shaped go. Shaped and glued into place. A 3D printer would make that so much easier. <laughs> you're you are ahead of your time. Uh, I am the 3D printer. Oh, we didn't show. What do you call that apparatus up there? I, it's the pitch and awe. Yeah, it's it's the the I call it the overhead gauge. An overhead gauge cluster. Gives yeah, them, gives yeah. you yaw and pitch and. Yep, yeah, yeah. Just a quick visual indication of the status of the boat. I I had to devise a way to hang it, and that's the way I devised it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, sure. And then uh, I can see some uh, light uh, receptacles up there as yes, well. Yep. And this is this is not in the movie. 
but this I thought made sense. I needed some way to lock up these pipes and also I needed a way to get wiring from front to back. I, I thought Nemo needed a way. Yeah, to, to pull all the conduits and exactly. electrical. Yeah, exactly. Just and like a just like a building. Exactly. It made sense to me, so I thought it was a good solution. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Ready to take it apart? Oh, yeah. Okay. They get these, not not the spyglass, but they get these added to them. Per the movie. Per the movie, and I suspect this is homage to Davy Crockett. I would which imagine. Which about at the same time. I would imagine. Because there's no reason for them to be there otherwise. Yeah, muskets don't work so awesome underwater. No, no. Oh, but these do. I only made two because they were so tedious. The underwater rifles. And you can see by my hand, they're, they're pretty small. Yes, yes, absolutely. That's a lot of detail. Those are fun. I would, I've seen people make them uh, a full-size replica. I have the molds in the back. Let me buy one off of you. <laughs> I think that's a clever, clever uh, item. This is a nice piece. And I've worked reworked this about three times. Beautiful. So that is the aquarium, right? It's the aquarium. Yep. Which would work better again on a double hull. Mm -hmm. It'd be mm -hmm. larger. This is the, I assume, a treasure chest. You see these Greek or Roman urns. I glued them permanently in place because they, they fall over. Yeah, no, good plan. Beautiful. I don't know exactly what that is. I think it was supposed to be a heater. Makes sense. I, I believe someone telling me that was supposed to be like a heater coil. Anytime I do anything that looks like a heater, I try to add a spring to it. Mm -hmm. Well, it'd be like a coiled pipe, right, to, coil to emit the, the heat? To emit the heat, exactly. This, this was originally intended to be a fan. Nemo, when they make the, after the battle with the giant squid, but while they're still underwater, and he says they went to 5,000 feet, he turned on the fans. Well, this was going to be a fan, and there would probably have been another one up here. These are all beautiful. Cast. Yeah, beautiful. You know how to do that. I, I, do. I had a guy at UT do this for me. Did a good job. Looks good. I had to modify them afterwards a little bit. Like like the little instructions to yourself. <laughs> oh yes, I, yeah, I do that, so I'll remember. There is, a, there is a painting that fits right in here and glues up and covers that joint. There's a little tiny painting and a little tiny frame that I made. The library in the movie is here. It's between the either the second or third or the fourth or the fifth and sixth uh, rib pipes. But that is my staircase down to the dressing room. Couldn't have the library here. So the li there's a, this wall is very plain in the uh, sub in the movie. I moved the library here, put in a desktop opposite this area that you just saw with the, the aquarium and put two chairs there for the officers if they want to eat. The, uh, you'll see later the galley and the dining area, and it's pretty snug. Mm, yeah, I bet. Here, are, this is the top layer, and they, these, as you glue, as you finish your wiring, these fit in there and glue together like this. This last one latches over, and that's the library. Oh, there's the painting. I did a painting of Venice. So you you painted this? Uh huh. Oh my gosh. I made I, I would have knocked that out on a printer in in a heartbeat. <laughs> no, it doesn't take very long when they're this small. And here are, if you see any chairs, there they are. This particular another chair glues in here. It's broken loose, and this slides in underneath the desk area, which is here. And, oh, yeah. 
and this is supported like the other side by mm -hmm. one of these braces. Anytime you see books, it's usually to give me stability. <laughs> Something to glue to, because there's not much surface there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I had to modify this a couple of times. That is my version of the organ. On In the movie, these were ram's heads. Mm -hmm. I couldn't quite get there. So they're just... Ornamental. Ornamental. Beautiful. These are all hand-shaped individual pieces of wood. All right, what are we what are we looking at here now? Cruise quarters, rear cruise quarters. Four, five bunks in this one, so ten guys can uh, hot bed it. There you go. So yeah. the, this structure is there strictly for support. There isn't enough room in this cabin to begin with, uh, with with the uh, structure here, but I had to have something. So, and here's a little. Whoops, won't sit. That's a little carpet bag, <laughs> which I thought uh, might be the right era. Okay. I don't know exactly what this is, but I call it the, uh, the um, heat reducer. It's right over the reactor area, and I use this to lower the temperature of the hot uh, hot water, I guess, down to a usable heat that they can then pump through the uh, sub for heating. Okay, yeah. If you see under the staircase, you'll notice that, that there's that dome-shaped hatch. I could never, ever figure out what that thing served. So I have made it serve. As they, you can dismantle the ladder lift that hatch and if there if there is uranium or fuel of that type that's how they load it okay there you go this is the this is the other half of the barrel shape that you see in the hull that they use around the rear hatch and that is three different pieces this looks like it's just dangling okay. it is dangling yeah I may, this may be the first time that that's been a part. Uh, oh, what fell? That was just the tray off the bottom of the... Oh, okay. All right. All right. There's the tray. Looks like a book fell out. Yeah, those were, those were trays under the bed. So apparently this was a very... Uh, had learned, to, learned crewman, uh, <laughs> or may, maybe that's the manual for the for the boat. <laughs> Who knows? I just made, it might be extra underwear for all I know. The uh, these also remove. Maybe I should take those out. Makes it easier. This is this is just a half story, half deck area, and I have uh, used it for them to store extra materials. Here's the gaffs for the skiff, which they come up out of the rear hatch when, when the skiff uh, docks. These are just extra little bits and pieces. The uh, another, I glued that together. That's extra rivets and the manual hammers to drive them into place. Okay. I don't know that that would work, mm -mm. but I put it in there. This is uh, in this part of the boat. Oh, I see I left that unfinished. That's uh, not good. I missed that. And I used this little piece just to hold that in place while it dried. I'm going to have to work on that. This is pretty much the way you see the end of that corridor in the uh, movie. Oh, that that looks exactly like if you actually if you tilt it up, we'll get some light down there from the overhead. There we go. There's a few variations for, but that's pretty close. Wonderful part of the ship. Mm-hmm. Just really incredible. There was a wall here 
and I have it, it's over there, but I may not install it because it's already too complicated <laughs> to try to get it all out past this. This These represent the electric motors that operate the uh, dive planes. Yep. Mm -hmm. They're not shown in the movie. They had to be somewhere. This is where I worked them out. Not where, and those line up to the dive planes on the on the outside, the, the stern dive planes. Exactly. Uh, this isn't in the movie, but it seemed to me a logical place to use something. I added this, which they don't show there either. It's just showed as a square corridor, and I thought they would structurally reinforce any area they could. Yeah, sure. Here's the... This is a big divergence. This hatch should really be forward about where this is right underneath the upper hatch. But because of the way the things struck, the three things that control the interior are the hatches, the external oh, hatches. Yep. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And this hatch should really be here, but I can't, I couldn't do it. it this, this controlled where that hatch wound up. Different scale, you might be able to solve that yeah, problem. Maybe, maybe. This, these pipes went up. I, they were curved. The ball here is curved too, by the way. But this was built so long ago, I didn't have the knowledge to curve the wall mm -hmm. at the same time. I should have. And here's how I treated it on the top. I just made it interconnecting with these half ball yeah. shapes. And you got like a I, little like uh, control center up in the front. I've got there a too. secondary control center. I'm not sure what it controls, but it seemed like a good place to have one. You'll see another one or two. Yeah, um, like maybe uh, manual air cycling or. They, they couldn't do it all from the uh, wheelhouse. There had to be some other places in the sub where they could actually control some of the function. At least that's my thought. I had to build this particular light out, but that's uh, that's how that one wound up there. There doesn't need to be a excuse me. Doesn't need to be a lot of light in this area. You can see pretty well into it, but I thought that would help. Now Disney indicates that there is a uh, a dining room, but in but I can never figure out exactly where it was. I put it in this rear corridor out of necessity. Use the same tabling that they use in the chart room. Put the same swivel uh, uh, stools. stools yep. And there's the same thing is happening on the opposite side. There is you literally walk down between the dining area. There's five stools, uh, five uh, crewmen at a time can eat. Here's I'm not going to show you the bottom of this. There's the access to the uh, uh, reactor core. And, and again, I say reactor core, we somehow assume that it's an atomic sub, but that's never actually said. This is the galley. It's uh, modified from the movie, but it has all the parts that you see, including the table for the cook to work on, I've added a knife rack on the side, but basically <laughs> that's the way it looks in the movie. This is the door that you see him go in and out of. That pretty much looks like the corridor facing. Over here, you can see the upper storage. I made this a seawater refrigerator. It's cold enough. They pump it through. It keeps things cold yeah, they're, they're, and there's sh there's shelves in the refrigerator that's awesome this pulls out to give you a view into it when it's installed yeah let's let's hook some lights up and we'll show everybody what it looks like inside all right so there there's the the lights on this area And let's take a look inside. We got some pantry shelves, a sink, 
I added a uh, desk area. You got to keep track of inventory, right? Inventory and structure. I needed it. I needed a little more structure. <laughs> and there's the stove. We got some hanging pots. I can see they're actually hanging there from little hooks. This is a storage area that's accessed from this uh, hatch, this doorway, and there's a short corridor here. Then here's the dive chamber corner. There's the repeat of that shape that we talked about earlier that's used in the stairs. I really thickened it up there and used it as a brace, mainly for looks. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is broken loose. Ah, that's there's where the that, little clip. That's yep. where the hook went. And there's the stools. What I love is not only did you model them, you modeled them to be functional. Oh, uh, the other side, they not so functional. Mm -hmm. This side, they worked. Mm -hmm. uh, they did work, but I had to glue them in place because they kept ca causing me problems. But anyway, that's their that's their purpose. Get them out of the way. And this area is just about wide enough to walk through to get to the back. And I'll show you that area in a second. There's the other side. I put a little cabinet in for uh, plates and things of that nature. I didn't, I actually did make the plates, but I'm not showing those. They didn't turn out that way. Mm -hmm. This area, things have shifted around a little bit. This is here and slides all the way in. You see up here on the top, this particular. Uh, where did I put it? Here the, it is. The grate, yep. This grate was always there, and I never quite understood what it was for. It could have been for footing, but I thought it must serve another function. And I, I assumed pressure would keep it down. Maybe it came off. Originally, that was going to be my ties to hold the two sides together. And this was a way of loading... Uh, supplies. Supplies. So this became a supply room. It's a good idea. Yeah, great idea. And this is part of the, in this case, I guess, you see it in the central hallway. I just repeated it here, made it a part of the cooling system. Because of the, ch oh, these are just little, there was a basket like this, similar, actually it was much bigger, showing in the movie, I made a basket to just sit here at the end of the hallway. There is a hook for retrieving those barrels, etc. Oh, yeah, so you don't have to like crawl in you there. You can't crawl in there. There's something they use constantly an oil, oil can. I've got several of them around. This comes out, and I you can you can see I modified modified everywhere to make that actually fit. This one's a full one, but that one's been trimmed off. Because I couldn't line up the pipes, I've got an S pipe that connects up with the pipes That must here. have been fun. No. <laughs> no. Not the best solution, but it worked. All right. Because of the different elevations, there's a hatch that goes here. That was the only kind of hatch I could get. You'll see later where that goes down into the uh, uh, yeah, the generator room is below this. Disney doesn't have a generator room. I do. Uh, this I had to add steps up to to get the next part. None of this moves. This is all permanent. The skiff that sits right on top of this. These are just little devices to connect it and make it look interesting like it has more machinery now we get to one of the more interesting rooms in the entire sub in my opinion absolutely that's the pump room a pump room yeah was i mean obviously at depth there's tremendous force on there so you need this gigantic machinery in there now in in the movie i'm trying to remember there was more of these correct nope no it's just two just two okay well then there you go these oh. rock in the movie. I yep. couldn't get them to rock. Yeah, they swivel a little bit. Yeah. Which they would need to, I guess, a little bit. But yeah, they, that is very cool. They do work. Of course they do. 
And then underneath, that, that would be from the scene of the movie where they were replacing the shaft, I assume, right? Exactly. I don't know how they did it because there's no room in mine. This, this is an invention of mine. I have, if you notice on the outside of the hull, and we'll look at that a little bit later because I've got the other half of the hull, you will see that there are vents, various vents. And I wondered, what are they venting? So what I did was I, I have valves from the reactor that pass through the ballast tanks for cooling. These are flexible pipes. They feed into this, and this controls discharge. There you go. Yeah, absolutely beautiful. That, that is like definitely one of the coolest rooms. I love that room. And if I remember correctly, on the wall there is the ship's, um, the engine uh, telegraph. Yes. And we've got to glue that in. It fell out of the wheelhouse. Oh, all right. <laughs> now here it gets all my invention. In the, in the movie, both ends of this room look like this end. Okay. Can't happen because of where I had to locate the pump room. Mm-hmm. This conal shape drifts down, mm -hmm. so I made this shape more like the nose of the sub yeah. where the hold was. Mm -hmm. uh, and I used that same kind of door on it. And I had to make another modification. Look closely down there. Steps. Oh, yep. Descending. Mm -hmm. This is a flat platform in the movie. But I had to descend down. Now I had to have a reason for all of this. And the movie, this drive shaft goes straight out right. to the propeller. The pro basically, they were saying it was the propeller shaft. Yep. It can't. No. It has to have, what, differential? Gearing, differential, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Here is the gearing. It runs into here. This is the gearbox. Here's the controls. One of them's fall. excuse me. One of them's falling over. Okay. That controls the gearing. Guys, the crewman can step in here. He's got his own control mm -hmm, system here. Mm -hmm. he, can, he can oil it. An oil can could sit here. There's an oil station. That's his gearing. This can flip up. There is no engine shown in Disney's plans. For lack of a better term, that's your dynamo. Yep. That's your big electrical engine. And here are your... Dis, uh, your... Uh, Hull energizers? Is that what we I mean? Hull energizers to electrify the hull if you don't want anyone invading. Yep, that, and that makes sense. We got the giant motor and it's got a direct connection to the uh, to the grid work, the framework of the hull. I added the, this is a, again a gearbox of some kind or... or uh, maybe the seal. That could be the giant the seal. seal, yeah. Maybe the seal. And these are two motors that control the... Uh, rudders. The rudders. I'll paint lines our string wire here to allow that to actually turn. And this of course turns, but not like yours. Yours mm -hmm. actually works. <laughs> Mine's just a fixture. Yeah, that that is is really cool. This whole section here is just awesome. I think that's and that got that's one of the earlier parts that got built. I kind of knew what to do there. Yeah, I, well, and it's actually got a lot of reference I got in the mode in the movie. Material. And all right, you want to take this apart? We got to do whatever we got to do. All right. All right, we've got the floor out, and now we got access to all of these like super cool places. Are you want to start in the front, or you want to start in the back? Uh, we start in the front before. Let's start. Let's start in the front. Okay. This should be cruise quarters but I, I didn't have the space. So it is, it's all storage, and you can see there's little boxes from all over the world. And I'm going to put in more of this type of thing, uh, equipment, but what spare I- Spare parts and stuff? Yes, yep. spare parts. What I assume that Nemo did, because he was on the island of B Batavia? Volcania. Volcania, and he could not, uh, uh, have manufactured all of the necessary things. So I assume he had people around the world manufacturing parts for him. Correct, in, yep. Shipping him, trans-shipping him probably to Australia, New Zealand, but more likely Australia. He'd pick them up, 
take them back to the island. I put in a couple of places, a couple of sources for lights for Bob to light this area, but it's not really important. But again, like I said, this was originally cruise quarters. This is the uh, treasure room or the vault. You can kind of see it from the side here, a little tiny bit. Oh, we can see the light glinting on it. It's, that's very cool, actually. Uh, this was a hard room because I didn't have the same treasure as you see, and it's much larger, I think, in the real in the movie. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I, that's what I had to work with, and that's the size it was. Yeah. That gives you a view in to to the dressing room. The dressing room is huge in the movie and I've had to split it into two halves. Put Nemo's dive suit there. Mm -hmm. Let me stick my finger in. That'll give you some idea of the size of the dive suits. Yeah, let me, let me catch from the side. There you go. I think you could do better with the uh, with your 3D prayers. Well, they, they, you know, that's all fine, but, you know, sculpting empty dive suits is not an easy thing to do in 3D. This is the... Let's see if we can open the doors, and it'll stay open, just so you can kind of see in... Oh, to the treasure room. Treasure room, a little bit. And you can see how I rigged your light system for you to wire on, up to the beams. I couldn't think of another way to do it. Can't attach anything permanently to the bottom of the main deck. Right. It's because you couldn't move it. This is another head, and I think an important one. And that's kind of in behind. It's, the here, hang on, let me see if I can move uh, Actually, I think we're, we're good. We're good. If, uh, if you're coming out of the ocean, you're diving, you've been out for an hour or whatever, and you come back into the sub, you're going to need a bathroom. So I've given you, behind that pillar is a two-holer. Mm -hmm. And in front are two gold-plated bathtubs that follow the contour of the outer hull. Yeah, and we, and we got those those bathtubs. That's really cool. And that makes sense. You got to get rinse all the salt off, right? Right. Here is the, if you remember the Grand Salon, you remember the two pipes by the door that oh, come up yeah. and curve? They have to have somewhere to go. Mm -hmm. This is my invention for how they, how they connect up. I had to connect one to the other to give them passage under it. This is a ramp because this half of the dressing room and this half of the dressing room are at two different levels. Oh, yeah, yeah. A different scale would let you flatten that floor out. And this is the second. And then we've, we've got a passage, a door, that goes in. Is that a room or a corridor? I can't tell. That is, uh, it is a room with a pump and uh, access to the lights on the on that side this side they would have access right through here i'm going to trim these off this would be a panel that would give them access on the starboard side mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But that but that's for that's for maintenance that's a maintenance uh, corridor back there and now we're into the business end of things yep you can take it from here. You'll recognize everything. Well, there's there's our dive chamber. Let's see if we can get some ambient light in there. There we go. You'll the, see on the walls up there, there are two places for Bob to wire. Lights, yep, yeah, that'll be really cool. And then we got this descending ring that lifted and lowered the divers from the, uh, I guess there, you call it like a moon pool or something. I think they did. And, that, and there's a little motor up above it. It's up against that. Uh, oh my gosh! You really thought of everything. And then what do we what do we got hiding in the back there? That okay. looks very. Remember Nemo talks about the batteries. There they are. That's the only place I could figure that was wasted space. And yeah. I built a platform and put batteries there. There you go. Surrounding the dive chamber. 
And obviously that would kind of be symmetrical about the other side as well. They right? would they would be, but you'll but this 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 unit for visual things for visual purposes and to indicate that it's an electric. Uh, what would that be? An insulator or? Yeah, I could see that. Yeah, yeah. an insulator. Sure. It's on this side, which gives you limited but some better visibility into the dive chamber. Yeah, and yeah. I'm using it as a brace to help mm -hmm. hold that. But that is. And there's two different battery systems, if you see it. Mm -hmm. I don't know what they are, but I wanted to have two different looks. There you so go. So we've got a backup system. Yep. This is, this is just a second layer so that we can attach a light. Okay. And it'll sit there. Right here sits a room that I gave nothing to. And, and it must be, we'll have to look at it. It's a, it's not, it's just primary. It's not even anything. And I thought that if I ever needed a transformer or a wiring or something to work. Oh, oh, I see. Like a practical it's, room. <laughs> it, it, it's a place where you can gather things. Sure. Yeah. Okay. And, and stuff them behind good, there. Good to know. And, uh, and this is, I've got it. I see. It's probably been a few years since this has been off. I can tell by the the um, age of the tape. Age of the tape, exactly. Thank you. You can tell I'm not used to speaking. I'm used to working. <laughs> this is one of my favorite rooms, and you'll notice the differences that I have made. In Disney's movie, the pipes come out of this reactor wall, and they head to the. I'm not sure which side they head to, because this is the reverse of what the movie shows. These pipes are actually on this end in the movie, I believe. But they also go off in that direction in the movie. Okay. I ran them down the center because I had all this void space. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't think they would do that. No, and, and actually it, it, from a symmetry perspective, I think it looks really cool. They, these are. This is the reactor area. You see that all the coloring lights and everything uh, going on. Very impressive. And um, but I added another thing out of necessity. As you look down below, you'll see this tube. Well, this is part. This is exactly where the outer ballast grate. ballast grates are, mm -hmm. and there has to be. A space inside for that, so I mounted all of the uh, the uh, furnaces. I don't know what to call them. Up on top of that. Yeah, that but it still looks. It still has the right look. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, in Nemo's case, Nemo comes. He's showing up, Professor Aranax around the sub. They come down here through the pump room. They walk under this. Uh, pipe system here and enter the power room from this direction. Mm -hmm. Can't do it. Mm -hmm. I couldn't make it work. No. So I have a cross corridor here from that one corner that you saw. You go down into that, let's where's that light again? You go down into that corridor, come forward, go into the, through the door, into the uh, uh, the reactor the reactor room here's the reactor right there the way I've the way I've done it the uh, oh I'm sorry let me no you're good yeah this they show uh, Nemo raises this up this goes up and down it will it's it, it will move it's a uh, little oh, stiff well. and this tracks back and forth the shield and it tracks back and forth. <laughs> and you can then look through, and I'm assuming what's happening here, since I know nothing about atomic energy, that this is some sort of uh, glass deflected mirror system that lets you at least kind of... I guess. ...kind of see it at an angle into the... Uh, but it, 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 you didn't want to look at it too long, evidently. Here is, oh, I've already put it in. Okay, there it is. And this is the 
power generating room, which they never actually show such a thing in the movie. I've got a big bolted front on, and this is the turbine, and uh, this piece here is about five, three or four times bigger than what they show in the movie. But I had to change the elevation, but there had to be a, it had to be an electrical generating room, and this is it. This is my version of it. Yep. Yep, and I love that you can see the little stairs in the corner there and a bunch of like control stations and I checked a I checked an atomic sub. I had I did this two or three times. These shapes that you see that I'm putting the light on, mm -hmm. they are in a, an atomic sub, but I'm not sure exactly how. I put them up here and chain connected them and they would feed back out uh, some way. Mm -hmm. I've got a valve there on the end, but mainly because I didn't know what to do with it. <laughs> I put a brace here at the end to to end it all. That's a recent addition, and this will get pushed back in. Oh, it's it's out of alignment. This will get pushed back in and pinned mm -hmm. and glued in the final proper operation. I think we looked about everything. That's it? I think that's it. That's all? Well, let's see. <laughs> Losing my voice. That was a lot of talking. That was a long that was a, 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 a long and involved tour, but there is so much to see. Well there you go guys. That was like a sneak preview of the innards of this amazing Nautilus uh, built by Ken Dowd. And here at the Nautilus Dry Docks for installation of a lighting system. We're going to end this video here and we're going to pick it back up again after we start installing the lights. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. Big thanks to Ken for coming all the way out here Thank and bringing the project. the project on. And uh, we'll get this thing posted up for everybody to take a look at coming up in the very near future. This is Bob Martin, the RC Sub Guy, here with Ken Dow. We will catch you next time.